so actually till now what we have done is we have uh, introduced you to the iot like what is an internet of things we have given the definition uh, we took a lot of example where we try to understood uh, how we can connect even the devices like refrigerator or a thing like a chair or a table to the internet of things uh, right and what we mean by iot devices we look at the basic electronics and in the last session i said that the voltage divider is going to be a very important circuit that you must look into then you know we we try to understood this basic electronics on the tinker cad and we did some hands on on the tinker cad to understood the ohms law and effect of varying the resistance and i have shown you the primary uh, you know basic electronics on the tinker cad right and on the similar track uh, you have been introduced to the different kind of sensors and the actuators and we have given you an exercise to list out the sensors available in your mobile device right uh, now in order to accelerate the your laboratory work right and to start doing some experiment in the lab we, we need to introduce an arduino uh, you know an iot device and the first iot device that i would like to introduce to you is the arduino right so uh, this is an arduino board you can see in this diagram right it's a very small uh, board which has a microcontroller which got a memory and uh, you know it's a fantastic uh, microcontrollers where you can do programs and you, you can make a system you can make a small iot projects even some very meaningful projects using this board and you would be surprised to know the cost of this board is just 450 inr right uh, even if you bargain and you purchase in the bulk still it could be down right so let me introduce uh, to you this uh, iot device so basically uh, this is a website from where you can download the arduino uh, software which is required to interface the arduino board right uh, we, we can connect this board using the a uh, cable like uh, the the kind of cable that we have in our for a mobile charging right so you need to you can download that software and i wish uh, all of you to visit this website right and uh, you you need to install the driver that comes with arduino to be able to communicate with the board so we we supposed to communicate with the board once you download that you you are getting an entire id and some basic inbuilt programs and a lot of stuff so that you you can start working with that right so uh, obviously when you are downloading the software the assumption is that you have an arduino board uh, and then you can play around so let's try to understand uh, how this arduino board is designed what has been given on the board and how we going to use it right so i hope uh, you are able to see this screen uh, quite zero number to 13 number right zero to 13 number so uh, because we have started from zero it's going to be 13 so its total are 14 pins right out of this total 14 pins you have here zero is the rx and the one is the tx now rx stands for the receive tx stands for the transmit so if i want to transmit something from my arduino board to some external device that that wire goes from here and if i am receiving something from the external device to my arduino board that 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 wire will come here so this is your transmitter and receiver serial connection then you have a pin number 2 3 4 5 6 uh, 8 9 10 11 12 and 13 and uh, right uh, like this it has been number like this now if you observe this pin number 3 pin number 5 pin number 6 pin number 9 pin number 10 and pin number 11 where we have a tilde -like, like this right we have a tilde like this and those tilde indicate here it has been written pwm pwm stands for pulse width modulation right so these are the pwm pins i will explain you that don't worry but this pins that means the pin number 3 5 6 10 11 9 10 11 uh, can be used as a pwm i will explain you the meaning also and all other pins like uh, starting from pin number 2 to pin number 13 can be used as a uh, almost all are digital pins actually right but uh, you can use some functions to emulate the analog functionalities also all these pins can be configured either into the input mode or the output mode what i mean by that i will explain you after this pin number 13 you have a ground 
so here you will get a ground uh, connection so for example if you remember to make any circuit you, you you are giving let's say power supply and the other terminal has to be connected with the ground so that ground connections you will get from here also right similarly uh, at the downside if you can look at here you, you you have a pin for a ground here also right like this you have a ground here also similarly you have a v input here to ground connection here you have a 5 volt right uh, uh, available so if i want to give a 5 volt to a specific device i can use this pin right i can have a 3.3 volt here also available so if i want to give a 3.3 volt i can use this and even i can i know uh, I, how i can make a lesser volt out of this 5 volt right uh, i have been already i have already introduced to you the voltage divider circuit so even uh, you have availability of let's say 5 volt or 3.3 volt and you want to provide a laser voltage you can always do by a voltage divider circuit that you already know right uh, you can look uh, i wish all of you to read this thing microcontroller 8 mega 328 this operating voltage is 5 volt input voltage recommended it's 7 to 12 volt and digital input output pins so th that is a 14 pins that you have i already uh, updated you digital input output pins there are 14 pins that you have right of which six provide pwm output that is uh, and then you have analog input pin six here you can see friends uh, a0 to a5 right these are the analog input pins basically a0 to a5 so there are six pins you have a dc current per io pin 40 milliampere so please look at this part very carefully dc current per input output pin is 40 milliampere so in each pin you will get around 40 milliampere so even you are working on the arduino board and let's say you plug in the wire over here and you touch the other terminal of the wire you, you will not uh, feel so shocked so don't worry about that because the current rating is very low right and dc current for 3.3 volt pin 50 milliampere that that's what is saying what kind of current you will get from here right and this 40 milliampere is from the other pins so this is what the specification you have a reset button right uh, the, the here you have a usb connectors available right here you can give a power supply and and other things uh, for example uh, here the pin number is 0 and 1 which says tx and rx if you can see here it is also written tx and rx so this is the light given for tx this is the light given for the rx so if you have connected some devices over here and let's say you are not sure whether the communication is happening or not let's say data transfer is happening or not you, you can see the blinking over here these are the light right here you have been given a by default lod a led i mean uh, you know you you have a inbuilt led available if you look at this inbuilt led probably this inbuilt led is connected on pin number 13 only right this inbuilt led is connected on pin number 13 only by default this uh, i will cover this inbuilt led when we start doing uh, you know when i introduce you the first program and you you can read here it's made in italy right so th this is how your uh, arduino board looks like Uh, let, let me explain you. I already said the website. Even it has been written over here. I already said the cost, right? And the basic things I said. Now let me go ahead a little bit. This is uh, in this slide. You can see how you can connect your Arduino board with your machine. Now you may have a question: Ki Why I need to connect my Arduino board with my computer? So there are two objective, right? One of the objective. is to write a program so basically when i'm connecting an arduino board with my laptop or any other machine even desktop i can do that right it's not necessary that you can have a laptop always you you, you can also connect with the desktop so whenever you are doing that please understand the objective is to uh, write a program so what we are doing basically is we are using a software which we have downloaded from that arduino.cc website that i already mentioned to you and what i am doing is i am writing a program into the editor and then after writing that program i need to transfer that program to my arduino board it has a memory so my program will reside in the arduino board so why i am using a laptop just to get a screen where i can write something and then i need to transfer that program so to transfer the program which i have written here to my arduino board 
I'm using that specific software which allow me to, it has a device driver so it can communicate with the Arduino board and its memory and that program get transferred to that microcontroller, right? So uh, board actually, that board uh, program get transferred and then it get executed. But when you are connecting it with the laptop, actually your laptop so the two purposes. One is uh, it give you a screen, it give you an ID interface where you can write a program and you can communicate with the Arduino board. What I mean by communicating is you can transfer the program, you can read something also from the Arduino board, right? And another thing is it also provide the power supply to the board. It does not mean that in order to provide a power supply, you always need to connect with the board. Even there is an external adapter available and the power cable is also pro power socket is also provided. So once I have uploaded a program and let's say it is running on the Arduino board, it is not always necessary that I keep my Arduino board always connected with my machine. Arduino board itself is a machine, right? What you just need to give it is a power supply. That's it, right? So this is a special cable available where you can connect the Arduino board with the machine, right? And so you, from USB interface, the data get transferred to the Arduino board. And this is the screen of the software that I have mentioned. So your, your program get transferred to the board and this board has a circuit like this connected. So uh, according to the program, the circuit will behave, right? I hope uh, you are able to understood the basic cycle uh, and there is no concern till now. Yes, boys and girls, there is no concern, right? Okay, great. So uh, le let me move forward. Let me move forward. So this is how you are uh, connecting, right? Uh, and this is what I was telling you, you know, you, you can provide the power supply. Now, uh, as I said, you can use directly the adapter. So my 230 volt socket will do that work if I have an adapter. But let's say I want to put somewhere it is in the remote area. Let's say is Arduino board ko mujhe jhaad pe lagana hai. You can ask me a question why you want to put it on jhaad. Let's say some, some of you might be staying in Junagad or near to the Junagad and you know, uh, you have a doubt that the every night line is coming to your place. And we have doubt. Obviously, one of the options is you put a camera. Right? But uh, you know, this is a very small example where I am saying that camera can be fitted in your place, but uh, if you want to fit it in many places, let's say in the khetar, you know, in a farm then probably it's not uh, advisable to put camera everywhere. The one of the reason is it's a costlier device. Y you can put this kind of uh, controller there with the battery like this. And it has a specific socket which will do the job for you, right? Uh, so th those kind of uh, things can be useful. Uh, so, you know, maybe you can count the, you, you can look at the movement, you, you can count some steps. Uh, th there are so many uh, applications that one can think of. Right, so this is how you can use the Arduino board with the battery like this also. Right, this is the power adapter that I was talking to you. Uh, you can directly supply the AC voltage and then it get converted into DC by this. And so that, that's how your Arduino board gets started. Right, and this is, I already explained to you uh, again. I am saying that these 14 are the digital input output pins. I can use all this pin either in the input or the output. This is your power LED. This is your reset button. This is the in circuit, uh, in circuit serial programming header. This is the Atmel Atmega uh, 328 controller. These are the analog input pins. These are the power pins that I already spoke about, right? Uh, this is the TX and RX LED. This is the pin number 13 LED I already said, these are the USB jack, right? Uh, this is the crystal, uh, this is the 5 volt low dropout regulator and this is the DC power jack, right? So th these are the different uh, components which has been shown here, uh, right? And this is the website that you already I have said, uh, arduino.cc, right? You, you can download and install this IDE and you can connect the board to your computer via USB cable. If needed, install the drivers if required. Otherwise, it's not always necessary. You can launch the Arduino IDE, select your board. Uh, out of that IDE, I will show you that also. In that IDE, um, 
you, you will get multiple options so you have to ensure that you have to select the appropriate board in the next session i will show you the live don't worry then you can select your serial port please understand uh, while you are connecting your arduino board with your machine you are communicating with the arduino board in a serial communication fashion so you need to select the appropriate port that i will show you and then uh, there are some standard examples given inside the board that you can always uh, play around and you can also upload the program from your id to your arduino board and once you upload the program as i said friend you you uh, required no more this uh, machine actually right Uh, this is the id that i was uh, speaking to you about the uh, you know uh, arduino board so this is how you can write the program and you can see the id and there are different buttons available to upload the program to see the things now whenever we uh, draw any circuit and whenever we write a program for that specific circuit actually in the arduino it is called sketch right so each sketch uh, you can upload and you can execute this is what i mean by selecting a serial port so wherever you connect to the usb you have to ensure that that port has been uh, selected i will show this thing all the with the demo also don't worry now in the tools you have a board option and from that board you there are many options available you have to select the board which is available to you to program so th that's a quite obvious right and uh, this is how uh, this are the this is the life cycle how you can uh, write a program with the arduino so uh, the first step is you need to write your sketch we always understand sketch as a drawing right but it's uh, about a uh, uh, making a circuit and programming that circuit right so you write a sketch then there is a compile button available in the id press that compile button if there are no errors it will not show you any message if there are errors Uh, i mean not show you any message that means it will tell you that you, you are able to compile your program successfully right uh, you, you need to write your sketch here and after writing your sketch uh, you, you you need to press on the compile once the compiler is done successfully you can upload even you directly press the upload button uh, it first compile and then it get uploaded right and when while your program is uploading you can always check that your tx and rx is blinking that that indicates that the communication is happening between your machine and your i mean your laptop and your arduino board so program is getting uploaded and once it get uploaded your your program will come into the action so whatever the socket we have connected with the arduino board it start operating right so this is how uh, your uh, life cycle will work and this is how you know i already explain you this uh, thing right so this is how it works now uh, let me go into the bit detail how how we gonna work with the arduino board and then i will show you the demo also don't worry uh, if you remembered friends in this slide these are the digital input output pins right so i said two things one is your pin can work either in the input mode or your pin can work in the output mode now the question arise for you is when to put my pin into the input mode and when to put my pin into the output mode this all pin can be configured i am saying that all these pins can be configured to work as an input or as an output my question to all of you is how should i decide whether i have to configure a specific pin as an input or as an output let's say i want to uh, take a poll on this question and let me see what is your answer i am taking some input let's say from the sensor and i want to uh, read the value from that sensor i have to connect uh, right i have to configure that pin number 9 into the input mode but let's say for example i have an actuator connected on pin number 9 for example Le let's say actuator could be a dc motor for example and based on some uh, programming i want to make the dc motor on or off so in that case i want to give a signal to the dc motor whether i want to make you on or whether i want to make you off that that means my pin is going to give a signal to the device 
if my board is giving a signal to the device, my pin has to be configured into the output mode. I, I hope you are getting. I, I hope you are getting right. So uh, my my pin could be configured either into the input mode or it could be configured into the output mode. And based on that, I can always play around. Right. So depending on my requirement, let's say I have a sensor. Most of the time, if I have a sensor, my pin has to be configured into the input mode. If I have an actuator to connect, I have to configure the pin into the output mode. So this is how uh, that's a reason. So digital IO pins, that means this all pin can be used either into the input or it could be used as an output. But at a time it can work either as an input or as an output. Right. So I hope this is a uh, very clear to all of you let me go ahead right i already explained to you all these things and right now see look at this diagram digital io is a binary value it's either on or off so th that's quite obvious right one or zero y you can see either it's going to be a one or it's going to be a zero right now uh, there are some functions available that we're gonna write uh, you know in the program uh, this this lang program this language is very easy to understand. It does not require any specific course, right? If you know the C pro basic C programming, these functions are quite uh, self-explanatory. So there is one of the function available in the Arduino board which is called pin mode. Uh, this is how you have to write the name of the function. Like our standard convention, first letter has to be a small, and then whenever there is a word break, it has to be a capital. So in pin mode is a function, which got two argument. One is the pin to be used and the second one is the mode. As I said friends, I set a mode either input or output. So uh, either in place of mode, I have to write either input or I have to write the output. Right. And for a pin, I have to write a pin number. So for example, it could be a, a any pin out of 0 to 14. Right. Similarly, there is another function digital read and uh, as an argument, you have to pass the pin number. So uh, when I say digital read, so it will read the value from this pin and the output is either going to be high or it's going to be a low. Similarly, as you have a digital read, you, you always have a digital write, right? What you do in digital write is you have to say the pin number on which you want to write the value and you have to say the value. So that value could be either low or high. If, if you make it low, the meaning is that you are making it off actually. And when you are making it high, you are making it on, right? So output pins, uh, I already explained to you, output pins can provide 40 milliampere of the current. Writing high to an input pin, install a 200 kilo ohm pull up register. I will explain you that, don't worry about that. Uh, th this could be a default program. So when you create a new sketch in the Arduino IDE, when you create the new sketch, please listen to me carefully. If you go to the Arduino IDE and you create the new sketch, the sketch get created with a two default function, two default function. The one is the setup and the another one is the loop. There are two default uh, functions that automatically create created in every sketch, right? One is the setup. Another one is the loop. Setup is a functions where you need to do some initialization. Right. And loop is a functions where you need to write a code that you want to execute repeatedly. If I want to execute some code repeatedly, I have to write inside a loop and some initialization kind of task I have to write inside the setup. So for example, let's say I want to write a program of LED blinking. I want to write a program of LED blinking. That means uh, my LED get on, then it get off, then it get on, then it get off. And I want to do it continuously. So for example, let's say in the next Navratra, you decided you don't want to buy a series for a decoration and you want to make it out of your Arduino board, right? So here we, I'm just showing you one LED, but you can repeat that for multiple LEDs also, right? Or you can uh, connect the Bada Wala bulb also, something like that. So let's say I want to connect the pin uh, LED on pin number 13. Now, what is an LED? My question to all of you, what is an LED? Don't tell me it's full form. Your question is, uh, what I understood is, it's not necessary that uh, it is only for uh, actuator and sensor. I can connect anything over there with uh, for which I want to set a voltage level or a bit, or I want to read a value from there. 
right but most of the time while you are doing a programming you are playing with this too actually i think if i understood the question correctly uh yes it is a diode very good so my question to you uh, was led led is an actuator right led is an actuator it is not a sensor led is an actuator so when i am connecting an actuator on any pin my pin has to be in which mode main us actuator ko signal dena chahta hu ya actuator se signal ko lena chahta hu board mein see you have to think from a board perspective you have to be board you have to stand on side uh, on the arduino board when you are standing on side on the arduino board you have to think ki ye actuator ko mujhe kuch message dena hai ya mujhe actuator se message lena hai so when you are connecting an actuator with the arduino board your objective is that you want to pass some message from arduino board to the actuator right so led is an actuator so what i need to do let's say i have decided that i gonna connect the led on pin number 13 then i have set pin mode for pin number 13 and the mode has to be output aapko you, you don't require to do ratta maring here please understand aapko ye samajhna hai because i want to connect an actuator where i want to pass a signal a bit from arduino board to that actuator that is the reason i am configuring my pin into the output mode and that's the reason pin mode 13 is in output then you 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 have a loop and then what you are doing basically is digital write right so uh, what i want to do first i want to make that led on so when you make want to make it on what you do is you, you write a pin number 13 and you make it on now i want to make it off see when i want to give an illusion of off i have to put some delay between making on and off i have to put some delay so i have to make it on for some time so what i did is i have put the delay of 1000 now what this 1000 is 1000 is in millisecond so the delay is the function inside the argument you are passing into the millisecond so when i say 1000 millisecond it's obviously a one second so what i'm doing is i'm making it high for one second then again on the digital right pin number 13 i will make it low and then again i give a delay of one second so what i'm doing is i'm making an led on for one second i'm making led off for one second and because this four statements we have written inside the loop th this will continue so whatever the led is that you have connected on pin number 13 of that arduino board th that will keep on off on off for one second now let's say if somebody will ask you to make the led on and off for 5 second in place of 1000 you have to make it 5000 right so after writing this program you have to compile this program you have to upload this program you have to make the circuit and then your program is ready to show up the result on arduino board uh, creating of a new circuit here you have a different components right so for example i, I will click on the arduino and let me take this blink wala arduino board right ready made so i, I have taken this arduino board here uh you can see my arduino board here right and you can see arduino board is there uh, pin number 13 i have connected an led i have put the register in between and you you can see this register the reason we have put uh, in between is that because we want to provide a specific uh current i mean we don't want to provide the more current to this led so we want to save this led for a long life and so we have put the 220 ohm register over here and that led positive leg this big wala is the positive it is connected to the pin number 13 and the negative leg small one cathode is connected to the ground right and uh, if you look at this code here see there is an option called code friends you, you have to click on the code when i click on the code actually and here there is an option like block block plus text and here a text i am going into the text right so see maine pehle code pe click kiya fir yahan option tha block ka block plus text and text i i am in the text i want to explain so by default it will create a uh, two function i already said setup and setup Se uh, one is the setup another one is the loop सेटअप में हमने क्या किया पिन नंबर 13 को आउटपुट मोड में सेट कर दिया राइट एंड लाइक सी प्रोग्रामिंग हियर एवरी स्टेटमेंट नीड्स टू बी एंडेड विद द सेमी कॉलन राइट एंड देन आई हैव अ लूप 
what I we did is uh, digital write pin number 13 high and then delay of 1000 right then again digital write 13 low and again the delay of 1000 so I expect this LED to be on up for a uh, one second and see LED is connected on where pin number 13 and this is also the LED connected internally on pin number 13 so you can see in this program both this LED this L and this LED both will both will get blinking right so let me start the simulation uh, can you see the color changing on this LED and this LED internal LED? I wish you to observe. I wish you to observe. This is the program which is running. Right? If I stop this simulation and suppose I want to make this delay as I said earlier friends, let's say I want to have a 5 second. You, you, you can do the 5000 here and again you can start the simulation and you can see now the illumination time is more right so it's remain on for five second and it will remain up for a five second so this is how you can play around now let's say if i if i change this uh, big leg to some another pin for example uh, i will take this cable and i will make it connect on let's say pin number eight right now I have connected in pin number 8 in that case what I need to do is I have to change here right I have to change here it to the 8 uh, I have to make it change here the 8 and I have to make the change here the 8 if I don't want to uh, do this changes at three places I can take one variable here LED and then I can give the number to 8 if I do the start simulation again you can see the, the same code works because we have changed the pin number but still I, I have done the little bit of modifications in the program and it's working right so this is how you can program with the Arduino